we are going to the problem of canonical ensembles and you have seen few lectures on this canonical ensemble and uh, one of the most important problem regarding this canonical ensemble is to know about the energy fluctuation in a canonical ensemble because you know that energy of uh, the system in canonical ensemble does not remain constant as it is constant in case of a micro canonical ensemble so you can easily say that there is a fluctuation there is a variation in energy of the system in case of canonical ensemble so the aim of this present lecture is to know about the energy fluctuation in a canonical ensemble but uh, at the same time you will, we are all we will also see a very important fact that uh, actually uh, the thermodynamic properties of a system derived through the canonical ensemble approaches and the micro canonical ensemble approach uh, are actually identical so how you can say that uh, whenever we talk about the different thermodynamic properties of a system Uh, by following the concept of canonical ensemble and micro canonical ensemble both actually reach to the same result how you can say so after going through this lecture you will see that uh, the canonical ensemble approach and the micro canonical ensemble approach both are consistent with uh, one another that fact can be explained very easily by dealing with the problem of energy fluctuation in case of canonical ensemble okay so uh, we are now going to see uh, first of all uh, what will be the value of energy fluctuation in canonical ensemble and uh, for solving this problem i have introduced you the general concept of fluctuation of any physical quantity in a statistical mechanics in the previous lecture you have watched my video on this subject to know the idea of fluctuation uh, for any physical quantity in a statistical mechanics actually the idea of calculating fluctuation in a physical quantity in a statistical mechanics which we have developed in the previous lecture that will be utilized in this particular problem of finding the energy fluctuation in canonical ensemble okay all these facts i have mentioned uh, here for your convenience and you can see i am just giving just a reading for your convenience that you know in the canonical ensemble the energy e of a system is not fixed but it varies okay on the other hand you have learned that the energy of a system in micro canonical ensemble is almost fixed to a particular value but uh, the thermodynamic properties of a system derived through these two approaches are identical and so uh, you can say that these two approaches are consistent but uh, to explain the reason for this equivalence we will consider here the calculation of energy fluctuation in canonical ensemble actually in different university a question is asked to you that how you can say that the approach of micro canonical ensemble and the approach of canonical in ensemble reach to the same result uh, when we talk about the different uh, thermodynamic quantities in these two ensembles so for uh, for getting the answer of such type of question you can watch this video and you will learn how that how we can say that these two approaches are equivalent to one another okay so first of all we will actually find the uh, fluctuation in energy in canonical ensemble and then we will uh, learn that how we can say that these two approaches are identical or equivalent to one another okay and for this let us consider a canonical ensemble and you have learned that the partition function in case of a canonical ensemble is how defined in particularly in case of quantum system 
We have learned in the previous lecture that the partition function in case of a canonical ensemble is denoted by the symbol Jn of Vt uh, because this uh, <coughs> Gn or Zn you can say is a function of volume and temperature and this is defined as summation over n Gn e to the power minus En by Kt. Here actually uh, this En represents the energy of the nth energy level and Gn is actually the degeneracy of that energy level. It means the energy eigenvalue is fixed at En but that energy level is Gn fold degenerate. It means corresponding to this energy eigenvalue there will be Gn number of quantum states or eigen uh, there will be Gn quantum states or eigenvector or eigenfunction or wave function. Okay. Or in nutshell, you can say that the degeneracy of this nth energy level is equal to Gn. But when you talk about uh, uh, talk about a non-degenerate state, that is, if you consider that this uh, nth energy level is not degenerate but it is non-degenerate, then this degeneracy parameter Gn will be equal to one. And um, in most of the textbook, you will find uh, that. The calculation has been made uh, a, a, in this regard by taking Gn equal to 1. But here I am uh, talking about the general result and so I have considered that uh, this nth energy level is Gn fold degenerate. So I, I, I will not write Gn equal to 1 but this Gn may, be any, any, may have any value. Okay. Now for uh, getting the value of uh, root mean square value of fluctuation you know you have to find the mean value of energy and mean square value of energy and you know how this mean energy of a system is defined. If you want to define the mean energy of the system then you can use this result this is a <coughs> summation over n en gn e to the power minus en by kt divided by summation over n gn e to the power minus en by kt. Actually the numerator here denotes the total energy and uh, the denominator denotes actually the number of states number of state total number of states. So when you will divide this total energy by the total number of states you will get the average energy per state okay so this average energy per state is defined as i have defined in this equation too now uh, to get the value of this average uh, energy or mean square average mean square value of this energy we will have to do some calculation so watch the video seriously you will understand each and every step of this calculation this is not a very rigorous calculation this is very easy calculation and you can easily understand it so let us take here the cross multiplication you can see uh, that this equation 2 may be written as average value of e times summation over n gn e to the power minus en by kt and that is equal to summation over n e n g n e to the power minus e n divided by kt. Okay. Now keeping the volume and the number of particles in this system constant, we will differentiate this equation both sides with respect to temperature t. Okay. So you can see I have differentiated it. You can see in this uh, expression in LHS there are two factors or two functions you can say. The first factor or first function is this average value of E and the another function is summation over N Gn E to the power minus En by Kt. So we will use the rule of differentiation of product of two functions. Okay. So when you will differentiate this average value of E with respect to T you have to keep this uh, another factor at each and when you will differentiate this second factor with respect to t 
then you will have to keep this average value of e at is and so you can see this will be what this is del e by del t at constant n and v times summation over n g n e to the power minus e n by k t okay now we will take this uh, e at is and we will differentiate the second factor when you will differentiate this second factor you can see g n is constant and this e to the power minus e n by k t will be differentiated with respect to t so this will be what this will be e to the power minus e n by k t and then we will differentiate this uh, minus e n by k t with respect to t minus e n by k t with respect to t so this uh, minus e n by k will remain constant and the derivative of 1 by t will be minus 1 by t square so this will be simply e n by k t square okay e n by k t square so you can see i have written here that this is uh, e over k t square k t square has been taken outside of this uh, sign of summation because uh, this sign of summation is not implied for k t square and inside the summation there will be g n e n to the power e to the power minus e n by k t okay and when you will differentiate this rhs you can see this in this rhs uh, when we will differentiate then again uh, this e n times g n is constant and differentiation of e to the power minus e n by k t that will be simply what that will be simply e n by k t square you can see here so this expression is 1 over k t square summation over n g n times e n square e to the power minus e n by k t e n square is here because you now 1 e n is already present and after differentiation you get another e n so there will be e n square and this, uh, this is a very simple thing you um, i hope you have an idea of differentiation so this is useless fact uh, you can do it okay now now uh, see the rhs uh, i have written at is and uh, uh, sorry now we will uh, rearrange the terms in this expression so bring this second term in lhs in rhs okay and when you will uh, when you will bring this second term in rhs this will be minus and this 1 over kt square will be a constant fact will be a common factor and the remaining term will be what the remaining term will be summation over n this much that is g n times e n square e to the power minus e n by kt and minus this much you can see minus this much okay and in lhs only the first term remains okay now uh, multiply by this kt square in lhs and divide by this factor uh, summation over n g n e to the power minus e n by k t to each term of the rhs so your result will be what this is k t square times del e by del t at constant n and constant v and that will be equal to this first term that is summation over n g n e n square e to the power minus e n by k t and divided by this much okay and minus again the second term divided by the same factor this is summation this is minus average value of e summation over n g n e n e to the power minus e n by k t and divided by summation over n g n e to the power minus e n by k t okay now let us see this first term represents what since here there is e n square so actually this represents uh, first term represents the average value of e square okay as you can see that uh, average value of e is defined like this 
but at the place of en now there is en square so that expression actually represents the average value of e square okay and this second factor this represents the average value of e but one of the average value of e is already present here so average value of e times average value of e that will be equal to average e square and i have written it here you can see in lhs this is average value of e square minus e average square market and that is equal to kt square times del e by del t at constant n and constant p okay but you have learned in the previous lecture when i have actually explained the general concept of fluctuation in a physical quantity there you have seen that uh, if we consider any physical quantity f and uh, we uh, find the value of this uh, expression then you have seen that this is simply equal to average value of f minus f whole square okay you have learned it so you can write that this uh, average value of e square minus average e square is equal to average value of average value of average e minus e whole square okay and so you can write uh, in this expression at the place uh, at the place of lhs you may write like this okay so lhs has been replaced by this expression this is average value of average e minus e whole square and that will be equal to kt square times del e by del t at constant n and constant b but uh, you know if uh, the number of particle is very large in that condition the instantaneous value of a physical quantity is almost equal to its average value okay so uh, in uh, in uh, but in case of statistical mechanics this condition always hold when you consider a statistical system definitely the number of particles will be very large because in case of uh, large number of particles a statistical concepts holds so uh, this uh, condition is always met in case of a statistical problem and uh, if n is very large you know that the instantaneous value of a physical quantity is equal to, almost equal to its average value so you can write in this case that this e which represents the instantaneous value of energy that will be almost equal to its average value okay so now let us divide this equation 3 both sides by this e square but in lhs at the place of e square i have written a square of the average value of e but in rhs i have written e because both are almost equal okay have you learnt it or not i have divided both sides of this expression in equation 3 by the value of e square okay but e is almost equal to average e so in lhs i have written A square of average value of e, but in RHS I have written uh, e a square to get a particular result. Okay. Now uh, you know that uh, this uh, uh, numerator actually represents the fluctuation, that is the mean square fluctuation. You can say this uh, um, e a square average minus e average square. which is equal to this much that can be written as average value of delta e square and you have learnt in the previous lecture that it is called mean square fluctuation in e mean square fluctuation now you know that we define a very useful quantity uh, which is called relative root mean square fluctuation and if you want to define the relative uh, root mean square fluctuation in, in this energy you have to divide uh, 
and this uh, uh, root mean square fluctuation in e by the average value of e okay so i have uh, forgetting the root mean square fluctuation i have taken the square root of this mean square fluctuation so you can see this is square root of delta the mean value of delta e square and divided by this mean value of energy e and what will be that that will be simply equal to a square root of this much actually we have taken the square root of this lhs okay and uh, a square root of this much this will be equal to t times root over kcb divided by e but uh, i have written here cv but i have not explained this you can see that actually this del e by del t at constant v this is actually the a specific heat capacity at, at constant volume this is just definition of cv so this uh, factor del e by del t at constant v has been replaced by this quantity cv which is a specific heat at constant volume okay i think you are getting the things now for any classical system this energy is of this order n kt because you know in case of perfect gas when you talk about its energy classically the expression is 3 by 2 n kt okay n kt i have not written here this constant factor 3 by 2 because i have written here only the order of energy and this is of the order of nkt and cv we have definitely an idea of uh, classical theory of a specific heat of solids when uh, i if you have not an idea you can watch my video on this topic in that playlist of, of my channel named thermodynamics there you will get dulong petit's law and that actually expresses that cv is equal to 3 by 2 r where r is actually universal gas constant and this r is equal to nk when you say that this n is above gadot number okay so you can say that this cv is of the order of nk i have written only the order not the exact value so for getting the order of these quantities Uh, you can put these values in rhs of this equation 4 so this uh, relative rms fluctuation this uh, quantity in lhs is called relative rms fluctuation in energy that will be equal to what you can see this equation 4 t is at is here and k square root of k so i have written k to the power half and cv this is of the order of nk but it is inside the square root so i have written n to the power half and k to the power half and divided by e e is of the order of nkt so e has been replaced by nkt okay now you can see this uh, t will cancel out and k half k half this is k and this k will also cancel out and this n half will cancel out and in, uh, in the denominator there will be only root over n okay root over n so this is simply equal to 1 over root n okay and uh, this rms fluctuation in energy is denoted by the symbol delta e and this is equal to 1 over root n so what you are getting here you can see that actually when we have calculated this relative rms fluctuation in energy this is just of the order of n to the power minus half n to the power minus half this rms relative value of rms fluctuation is of the order of n to the power minus half where you know that n is the number of particles in the system but as i have told you that particularly in case of classical system this n is very large this is almost of the order of 10 to the power 22 this is of the order of avogadro number you can also say 10 to the power 23 that if you consider one mole of the system the number of particles will be of the order of 10 to the power 
and uh, when you will take 10 to the power 23 uh, uh, or 22 let us say then this n to the power minus half will be almost equal to 10 to the power minus 11 and this is such a small number which you can take that uh, this is almost equal to 0 this is negligible so you can easily say that for large value of n the relative root mean square fluctuation in energy e is negligible it is completely negligible okay and so on neglecting the fluctuation of energy e in a system in the canonical ensemble has an energy equal to the equal to or almost equal to you can say to the mean energy value e okay and in this situation the canonical ensemble will be just equivalent to the micro canonical ensemble and they will yield practically the identical results okay have you understand or not because this i have mentioned it here you can see that in in this case since the fluctuation in energy is very small that is negligible or you can say that this is almost equal to zero so you can take that energy of the system is almost equal to its average value and if it it is it is almost equal to average value then that this delta e a minus e okay a whole square and its average value will be almost equal to zero so you can say that uh, in this condition the energy of the system remains almost constant there is no fluctuation in energy but you know that energy remains constant in case of micro canonical ensemble so you can say that there is not a remarkable difference between a micro canonical ensemble and a canonical ensemble and that's why we see that uh, both of these approaches will give the same result for different thermodynamic quantities and uh, in this way you can say that uh, the micro canonical ensemble and the canonical ensemble are uh, equivalent to one another in giving the value of different thermodynamical quantities okay so i hope you have definitely understand each and every step of this calculation and each and every concept of this video okay thank you very much